Hello and welcome everyone to World Vegan Vision Mumbai and its first online conference in 2021. My name is Ruchika Chitrabhanu and I warmly welcome you all today for the series of Awakening Souls. World Vegan Vision is a global non-profit organization based in New York, USA. founded by Harshad Shah and his wife Malti Shah Good evening to all and greetings to all attendees from around the world Our tonight's talk is a follow up to our last event Meet the Awakened Soul so there will be some repetition of some information from my last speech and in our experience repetition is a good virtue to awaken all of us it also helps changing our age old habits and behaviors from our conscious and subconscious mind but mostly we will share some simple and practical tips to change our daily behavior to be successful in life and be happy this follow up event is arranged upon the request from some of the past event attendees who feels that they are now logically convinced and may be ready to change their way of living to vegan and ahimsak lifestyle but they feel they need more help and guidance on how to implement such change in their present life and how to handle any obstacles that may come on their way and this is very important as my wife and i had faced a similar dilemma when we started our vegan journey in 1989 but we were lucky to have a kind and gentle muslim philosopher shri akbar ali jetha to help us start our journey about 31 years ago in our personal experience path of veganism and ahimsa is also path to be successful happy enlightened and in bliss and nirvana here we want to express our most sincere gratitude and thanks to world vegan vision mumbai chapter and its founder shri hk shah and the chairwoman shrimati malti ben shah for finding this organization and help arrange such unique and invaluable events my wife naina and r 76 years of age and trying to follow vegan and ahimsak lifestyle for more than 31 years and we are truly believer that we are blessed by our all loving god for being in our life akbar bhai's presence who became our dear friend philosopher guide and a guru he inspired us and motivated us on this wonderful path of vegan and ahimsak lifestyle hence whatever information we share today is result of his teachings guidance and blessings since there will be many quotes from his and other spiritual masters writing so not to miss any important quote and avoid any omission today i am reading my prepared speech so here we go as always and in all the ways everything happens for the reason and it is always predestined and it happens as a result of our individual past and present karma so for some lucky soul 
today's event could be a game changer moment as it happened to us about 31 years ago. As knowledge and techniques we will share today has a potential of life-changing experiences. And we will also learn how to achieve whatever our wishes and desires are, of course, within reasonable limits and in proportion to, and as a result of our past and present karmas. Personally, for us, it is not anymore a theory because it has actually happened to us. And we are living proof of having tremendous personal benefits as we have experienced that in spite of working very hard, some of us do not achieve our expected success and fulfill our lifelong wishes and desires. So later today, we will try to understand why such thing happens. Now, for the time being, Let's agree that we are all children of God. So our creator must have blessed us that we will all, always and in all the ways be in love, joy, peace, happiness and truth. But instead of that, why some of us are in fear, worry, pain, suffering, and guilt. Now in our understanding and experience, all such situation happens as a result of our individual present and past karma of our present life and also our past lives. But the good news is that our creator God has given us all the knowledge and opportunities to change effects of our past bad karma by creating new good karma. So we will try to learn that as well. Our creator or God is so loving and kind and generous that it has bestowed us the same creative power which God has. So now we all have an opportunity and potential to change our karma and hence destiny to achieve all that we want and deserve. But here comes the correlation between diet, karma and our destiny. As stated in Sri Akbar by his fantastic book, Reflections, and I'm going to read many quotes On destiny. A change in our diet to our destiny. We may have control over our destiny, but we have control over deeds. Our destiny is governed by our attitude and our attitude is based on our deeds. We cannot change our destiny, but changing our attitude, we should help destiny to work for us by being honest, sincere, unselfish, and harmless. End of all these quotes. There are many, many ways to change our bad karma into effect of good karma, which eventually leads towards our desired wishes and destiny. In our understanding and experience, the easiest and the fastest way to change effects of our bad karma and convert into effect of good karma is by following vegan and ahimsa lifestyle. So at this time, we want to share our lifelong experience of why we became vegan and how we became vegan. 
we will also explore how some of us, it is very easy to start on vegan path. And for others, it is very difficult to adopt veganism and change our lifestyle, even though it is for our own benefit. Our understanding is that people become vegan, meaning harmless, egoless, honest, and truthful way of life, or follow principle of Ahinsa for various diverse reasons. Some of, us, uh, some of us become vegan because of calling from our soul. In other words, our mind is on the same wavelength as of our soul. Hence it follows and behaves and performs as per soul's awaken and alert callings. And again, that happens due to our past and present karma. And some of us become vegan because in spite of abundance of material wealth in our life, we feel that we are not happy and not experiencing bliss. That again is a result of past and present karma. This is the one of the reason why Sri Akbar Bhai evolved to be a vegan. Now, some of us become vegan because we are mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially in miserable and desperate situation. So we are looking for a way out from our awful situation. And if our past and present karma are somewhat good and align with our soul's wishes, we get help from good friend, philosopher, and guide, and guru and or guidance from spiritual scriptures. And we try to follow those principles and follow vegan and ahimsak life. That's why we became vegan because of the financial crisis and also some personal health conditions. Basically, other than true yogis, saints and godly souls, we are all driven in life by our egoistic mind and not by our soul's true wishes and desires. But most of us people become vegan for various other reasons, such as to follow principle of Ahinsa, for compassion and love for animals, to stop abuse, cruelty, and killing of animals, for personal health and welfare benefits, fear of death and to avoid pain and suffering, save environment and ultimately the universe, for spiritual growth, mental peace and happiness, and for financial and material gains, which was our reason to become vegan. It is like choosing and flowing with any of the various rivers to ultimately merge into ocean of God, to achieve ultimate happiness, bliss, and nirvana. From 1977 to 2007, we have lived in USA for about 30 years, and we were in ready to eat Indian vegetarian food business, which after becoming vegan, we converted from vegetarian to vegan food business. In December of 1989, we visited India to attend a family wedding. And at that time, we were very much in financial distress. And I also had a serious life-threatening kidney disease known as membranous glomeruli nephritis syndrome. And my wife Naina at that time was diabetic for almost 13 years and having family history of diabetes and heart condition leading to premature deaths. Hence, we were really desperate and looking for a way out from this dire situation. As everything happens for the reason, friend of our family, a truly noble and loving Muslim philosopher, Sri Akbar Ali Jetha, 
invited about 30 of us family members for a sumptuous vegan dinner at his luxurious home at Mount Unique building on Pedder Road, Mumbai. After meeting with his wonderful and loving family and delicious dinner, Sri Akbar Bhai spoke to all of us for about 15 to 20 minutes on Ahinsa and veganism and benefit of harmless, egoless, honest, and truthful way of life. Out of this talk, few lines attracted me the most, which were, if you become 100% harmless, you get 100% benefited. And if you become 100% harmless, you get 100% benefited. So I asked him, better in what respect? And he said, benefited mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. That financial word attracted me the most. Because at that time, we were in desperate financial distress and looking for a way out. So I asked him, who helps by doing all these things? And he said, whoever you believe your body, such as Krishna, Allah, Mahavira, Buddha, or any other God you worship, or even universe. He was very confidently said again, if you become harmless, egoless, honest, and truthful, you will get whatever you wish for and deserve in line with your present and past karma. So I again ask, what do we have to do to become harmless, egoless, honest, and truthful? And he said, just stop using milk in your diet. So I ask again, just by not drinking milk, we will get all these things what we want? And he said, yes, try it. So I requested him that we want to know more about this philosophy. Hence he invited us both next day for another delicious vegan dinner. Next day we went there for another sumptuous dinner and we were explained by him details of all what we have to do. And he explained the principle of benefits of veganism and ahisa and why and how we should start living harmless, egoless, honest and truthful way of life and how we may come out of our dire mm -hmm. situation. And since that day onwards, we both started adopting vegan lifestyle. It's worth noting that out of about 30 of us family members, only two of started on this path. And that is due to our desperate financial situation and our intense desire for survival. consuming milk, we saw other dairy products such as butter, ghee, yogurt, cheese, paneer, ice cream, honey, etc. Akbar all my questions and try to resolve all my desires and doubts in very convincing manner. Akbar Bhai followed vegan lifestyles for more than 40 years. He was also president of one of the oldest vegan organization in India, Beauty Without Cruelty. During his, this journey, he took leave from his very successful business and lived life of recluse for about 14 years to find why in spite of having all the material abundance, he was not experiencing a true happiness and bliss in his life, which he had experienced in his childhood days. He said he used to get spiritual experiences as a child and he believed that it was due to her mother's gift to him. But when he lost that, when he started growing and involved in daily harmful karma, 
of living our regular unconscious life. He also studied major religion and scriptures like Sri Bhagavad Gita, Quran, Bible, etc. And studied other religion practices such as Jainism, Buddhism, Sikhism. And ultimately he came to conclusion the true message and foundation of all the religion is love, truth, and ahisa, which is the manifestation of God for all of us. He published many books, including one of the best-selling book of his time, Reflections. Combined edition, which has more than 700 sutras and truths, also on happiness, also on path to en en enlightenment and parables. We are blessed to have, me, have him as our friend. What we are today is all because of his guidance. He also suggested us to read and listen literature of great following masters. And he started with audio cassette series of Sri Osho's recordings on Ashtavakra's Mahagita, Conversations with God, part one, two, and three, and Friendship with God by Mr. Neil Donald Walsh, Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, and many videos by Mr. Wayne Dyer and many more masters. He also wrote one of the most valuable scripture of his lifetime, 14 Steps to Happiness or Nirvana. Later we will read and try to understand these phenomenal steps which teaches us how to reach enlightenment and eternal bliss and nirvana in this life now and here. Now let's come back to our subject, how to live dairy products from our dairy diet. Again, if our past and present karmas are helping us, we will start thinking that if we are not drinking milk, how can we consume other dairy products such as butter, ghee, yogurt, cheese, paneer, ice cream, honey, etc. So slowly you stop consuming them as well. Here it is worth noting that if we stop consuming dairy products for minimum 21 to 30 days, chances are that we may stop it forever and start adopting vegan lifestyle. As our craving for dairy products will come under control, as our test bud also starts changing. As you stop using dairy, you are also becoming more harmless and eventually becoming egoless, honest and truthful. And there is a transformation going in your mind, body and spirit, which will also bring some initial rewarding results by improvement of your health and other successes. So now we grow from here and start becoming more conscious and such understanding and awakening is coming from within our soul. And that may lead to us to stop using leather, wool, silk, ivory, and such other animal products. On our personal benefit, in about six month time, my kidney disease was totally under control. And that again gave us more confidence. I'm also a survivor of multiple cancer, surgeries, stroke, Crohn's disease, etc. And my wife is survivor of now about 45 years of diabetes, triple bypass surgery and stent. And she's 76 years of age and alive today, whereas unfortunately her mother and sister died at age of 45 from same disease. Also our financial status has improved considerably and is now very stable and healthy. So we are totally convinced that we are today alive and happy truly because of following vegan and ahinsak lifestyle 
which is harmless, egoless, honest, and truthful way of living life by thought, word, and deeds. As stated in Sri Akbar Bai's book, Reflection, following quotes, by indulging in harm, we are unknowingly weaving a net around ourselves, which would eventually entrap and suffocate us. So basic and fundamental truth is that if you don't harm anyone, no one can harm you. As there seems to be a protection from our God and or universal force. And this also gave us sense of security and a willpower to go through any other adverse situation in life. Now, we also have understood that most of us get logically convinced that yes, everybody should adopt this lifestyle. But most of us find it is very difficult to change our addictive food habits. So in spite of knowing all the benefits, most of us can't or will not change our lifestyle as since our childhood, our food habits are engraved in our way of life and habits. In our belief, all dairy products are most deadly addictions, which is very difficult to get rid of. And it slowly kills us mentally, physically, and spiritually. Here I would recommend, please visit a very important website, notmilk.com. Again, it's notmilk.com by my friend, Mr. Robert Cohen in New Jersey, USA. And see from letter A to Z, how many disease dairy consumption creates in our body. Now again, as stated in Akbar Bai's book Reflection, quote, disease is due to lack of awareness and whereas aging is due to our faulty diet. A change in our diet can change our destiny. It may be better to suffer from abstaining rather than to suffer from indulging. It is so painful that we are not even conscious and aware of consequences of our consuming dairy products which involves serious abuse, cruelty, torture, and killing of billions of cows. In fact, consuming dairy is creating more harm and killing than eating meat products. So this becomes a huge part of creating our bad karma, and we have to pay a huge price for atrocities on animals. The great Beatles, Sir Paul McCartney has said, if slaughterhouses had a glass walls, everyone would become vegetarian. Also, as stated in Akbar Bai's book, Reflection, is there any difference between Hitler's camp and our slaughterhouses? Also, we have built slaughterhouses for animals and hospital for ourselves. There are more patients in the hospital than tourists in the hotels. And irony is that our unconscious state of mind is even unable to comprehend and understand correlation between how we do harm and having negative impact on our life mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here I want to share an important incident with Sri Akbar Bhai. It happened before we became vegan in 1989. Around 1987 or 1988 time, Akbar Bhai came to USA to release his book, Reflection, in Washington, DC. At that time, we were not knowing him at all. We just, on request from our family in India, met him and we were told as he is a vegan and not eating airplane food and any restaurant 
where non vegetarian food is served so he is basically starving so we took him to a fantastic vegan vegetarian restaurant for a vegan dinner it is a south indian vegetarian restaurant named woodlands in new york city and he enjoyed the dinner very much at that time i was feeling very high and mighty about life in usa as being richest and the best country in the world so i asked him akbar bhai what do you think about america expecting very positive remarks from him about america and without waiting for even a minute he said this country will go to dogs so i was shocked and taken aback so i asked him why are you are saying such things as this is one of the richest and the most advanced country in the world and he calmly said a country in which 39 million animals are slaughtered every day for few minute of taste on your tongue can never be prosperous and happy for long time to come so i tried and argue and said look look at the owners of the meat and chicken products manufacturers they are some of the richest people in the world and he said they may have material wealth but have you look inside their personal lives they must be suffering from drug addiction suicides divorces illicit affairs etc and country in general is waging wars all over the world killing millions and they are ethically and morally bankrupt country and its people are same as well that was my first eye opening history with akbar bhai and now after 32 years we can see how there is a continuous decay and decline of moral and ethical values in usa and how common people are suffering and some akbar bhais became best friend and guru and saved our life proving miracle effects of karma do our conscious state, unconscious state of mind we we even realize the harm we indulge in our consuming dairy product today and starting from tomorrow how it will affect our future life up to next 20 to 30 years and proportion of price we may have to pay will be about 10 to 20 times higher than the harm we have indulged in today and then we complain why all the pain and suffering and miseries appear in my life and we go to temples and complain to god about it what we have personally realized it and experience are few very simple truth and they are very easy to understand it's not a rocket science anyone can decide to change their food habits right now today on this moment onward as we did 31 years ago but we all need help as because of our unconscious and egoistic mind it creates desires and doubts anything we do anything we listen and anything we experience there is always a doubt why it is so and what do i get it from as stated in book reflection quote our thought consists only desires and doubt so another thing we realize is that unless you know what is real purpose of this life and actually what you truly want you may never get it so if you want something very desperately you can sincerely and truthfully follow on the principle of ahimsa and veganism and then we we'll, we need to sacrifice few small things in our life to achieve to get ultimate success happiness and bliss in our life which is another way of reaching enlightenment and nirvana and then there is a huge misunderstanding between happiness and pleasure we always misunderstand pleasure with happiness please remember 
pleasure is momentary and it comes from outside source and is never enough and addictive and always keeps us wanting for more and more whereas happiness is eternal and satisfying and arising from within which is from our soul and it always gives us a bliss so because of our unconscious unawakened and non alert egoistic mind we are confused and seeking for our daily pleasure for few seconds or few minutes or few hours and misunderstand that as a happiness but then it fizzles out and bring us lot of unhappiness following are some of the golden sutras from sri akbar bai's reflection if we are not happy now we never be when i read this uh, sutra which is the first sutra of the reflection i asked him akbar bai your first sutra in your book is saying if we are not happy now you never will be so that is so this depressing thought that if i am not happy now that's why i am reading your book and then you are saying you will not be then he said no 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 you are misunderstanding it what i mean to say is that in whatever condition you are in you have to be happy and if it is not according to your desires and wishes try to know why it is so and try to change your life so that was the meaning so quote is if we are not happy now we never be so be happy in every situation you are in and if it is not suits your requirement then try to change it and change can come uh, if you are sincere about it and change is very difficult in life another quote pleasure is a poor substitute for happiness pleasure is a thing which leaves us wanting the happiness that we enjoyed in childhood was due to our state of mind and not to due to our external factors there can never be peace and happiness in world so long as we exploit other living creatures for food or otherwise so there are a lot of truths we have to understand but main truth we want to share is that it is not that difficult or impossible to achieve happiness or nirvana or whatever you want in your life mentally physically spiritually and financially within the reasonable limits so it is doable and it is achievable so whatever we are doing small or large which is not aligned with our soul's wishes and desires then we are not going to live true meaningful life Shri Akbar Ali Jetha wrote in his book Happiness quote Every human being rather than other than the yogi is unhappy today wherever he may be living irrespective of being king or a pauper although he may have wealth power or position he is still as unhappy as anyone else in this world the reason for this is because he is indulging in harm eating non vegetarian food cutting trees or for firewood furniture etc or drinking milk of other creatures are some of the causes for his happiness to know why his happiness we must first understand about our mind the function of mind is to reflect the soul that is the real self or higher self in other words the mind acts like a mirror by indulging in harm the mind becomes so to say foggy that is it loses the clarity and more harm we do more fog the mirror gets to the extent where it does not reflect the soul at all when we are unable to perceive our soul which is the source of all knowledge and wisdom we plunge into darkness and go into dream like state which is non alert state at this stage the ego which is 
false self is created, which communicates in form of thoughts. But due to our ignorance, we think that the ego is a real self, end of quote. During our last four days events, many of, uh, many of you have listened to true masters and they have shared with us importance of various schools of meditation, which is very important to be silent and make our mind silent to communicate with our soul. As said by Sri Arvindo, quote, a sudden turn can come, a road appears, a greater mind may see greater truth, or we may find when all the rest has failed, hid in ourselves, the key of perfect change. On spirituality, Sri Akbar Ali Jetha says, quote, only qualification required to experiment, experience spirituality is utmost sincerity. The best initiation on the spiritual path is spiritual experience. Getting rid of the ego is the only horrifying experience in the spiritual path. And we cannot get concept of creator without spiritual experiences. A sound mind and body is essential for spiritual attainment. End of quotes. Spirituality is how it transforms our daily life into meaningful life. Also, we have observed that spirituality is understood and practiced and realized by mostly two types of people. One type is people who has abundance of everything, means, and material world. They have everything they can imagine and still they feel that they are not happy. And then they search for the truth and real happiness. And then they go into deeper understanding of life and then they understand and achieve enlightenment, bliss and nirvana or happiness. Like most of our true spiritual leaders, saints and godly souls are from the very affluent classes like kings, Mahavira, Buddha, Krishna, Rama, Mirabai were all from affluent class. But after realizing that everything, whatever they wanted, materially is they have it but still they are not happy as they become spiritual leaders saints and godly souls but that doesn't mean that only rich and affluent people have become spiritual leaders or saints or godly souls even common people with regular means have emerged as a godly souls if they got message from the within that is from their soul they are jesus Muhammad, Kabir, Tulsidas, Surdas, St. Francis of Assisi, Teresa of Avila, Ansari of Herat, and Jamaluddin Rumi, etc. And it was destined for them to be their past because of their past and present karma. Bear with me. In initial phases on path to Ahisa and veganism, many people find it difficult to understand all such messages and practices of meditation, etc. So we have found an alternative solution after listening to a great thinker and speaker, Brahma Kumari Sister Shivani Ji. For us, she is the currently the best and very effective spiritual master and teacher. Of present time. We all should try to listen to her on every subject from our current guru and guide YouTube. She suggests very effective and powerful daily acts and discipline to change our behavior and habits to change effect of our bad and past karma and how to create effects of new good karma. If we can adopt such changes in our life, 
we can be on path of happiness and nirvana. In our experience, unless we are already blessed due to our good past and good current karma, we can't change our destiny and bring happiness in our life by single stroke of any behavioral or habit change. So one need to start with daily acts of ahinsa, love, truth, compassion, forgiveness, for reaching to soul's wavelength. We have also experienced that in present time, which is a ghor kalyu, for someone it is very difficult to understand all the spiritual understanding and meditation, etc. So how do we change everything? You can't drop everything what you are doing, like your business or profession, which is not being done in completely ethical way. So what we all can do is start, starting from today, we start following true ethical and moral principle in life. It starts with first virtue of always be truthful about everything in life, not even white lies. White lies are those that when you are going for a meeting and you know that you are going to be late and you tell the person who you are going to meet, oh, I am late because traffic was horrible. In fact, you had started late from home and you knew that you are going to be late, but still, you just said the traffic was horrible. So that's a white lie. We have to stop that and tell the truth. Next time we start, you start early for the meeting. As stated in Akbar Bhai's book Reflection, at any given time, human beings are either trying to impress or to exploit. There are three stages of the truth, knowing, realizing and experiencing. Truth is a science, the science of feeling and therefore has to be experienced. Truth also unfolds only in sequences. To untold, bear with me. To unfold the further truth, we must first practice the truth which we have already realized. Also, I can share uh, a couple of more things. That everybody becomes vegan for different reasons. Can you imagine that I became vegan for just financial security? And now I'm vegan for the different reasons. So it is like a, there are several paths of reaching the God. It is a path you select. My sister became vegan two years ago because she saw a video at night. Her name is Parul Thakkar. Uh, cruelty on cows and uh, children of cows and she cried and cried and cried for two nights and then she became vegan next day and she knew, she knew us that we were vegan for 30 years but it did not affect her that time but they, now it is affected. So again uh, it comes to a proper time when you are ready. Second thing I would like to say something which is controversial but I think uh, I can share with you that Leaving milk and dairy product is a physical aspect of harm. But there are a lot of emotional and mental harm we uh, uh, create in our life to our spouse and to other people. That has to stop. But most difficult part is to change our mind. Because the mind is a fantastic machine created by God when you use it. But when mind starts using you, it's a monster and it is very difficult to control. So uh, some people want to become spiritual. They are already spiritually and uh, mentally and emotionally uh, vegan, but they can't leave dairy product or something like that. One thing that I must have a little milk in my chai. So there are a lot of milk available. So try to first do that. But if you can't do it, Continue that, but be vegan in your thought, word, and deed, mind, body, and spirit. So slowly your soul will promote and uh, prompt you to change that 
uh, habit also. These are the habits which will take some time. But don't give up and then start eating everything. I want to eat second and I want to eat rasgulla and gulab jamu and all that. If you, can, if you want to take... Another thing is that when you do that thing, that you want a two spoon of milk in the chai, think consciously that, okay, I'm going to drink this milk, but I'm prepared to pay the price. That consciousness you should always have. So someday you will realize when you get really hurt by something else, then there will be connection established between the drinking of two spoon of milk and paying the price by your health. How did I get three cancer? Think about it. 31 years of veganism and cancer. Why? And so, because whatever karma you have done, you have to pay the price. But God saves you uh, because you have started to become vegan. God saved me from the death. And I'm sorry, Akbar Ali Jetha was vegan for 40 years and he had a 16 strokes. So I asked him in the hospital, I went to Beach Candy, that Akbar Bhai, you are vegan for 40 years and how do you, do you get a stroke? So he said, Ashtad Bhai, whatever karma you have done, you have to pay the price. But the price you pay will be much more easy and tolerable if you become vegan. So. In my young days, I have eaten meat of horses and all the wrong thing I have done. So I have to pay the price. So he did not blame anybody, God or uh, something. He took the responsibility that, okay, I had done the bad karma. I'm going to pay the price. But then look at it, how he looked at it. He said, God is so kind on me that he has given me 16 stroke of luck. And why? He said, if, because I have lost my limb, uh, leg, I cannot walk. Now I can understand the person who doesn't have a leg, how he must be feeling it. And that compassion comes to me by experience. So when God does everything, good or bad, it is a lesson for us. It is a teaching for us. And from that, we have to improve ourselves. This is, a, this is the meaning of life, that every situation comes in your life to give you a lesson. Our spouses are the best gurus we have. Because spouses, we fight a lot with spouses, but then it teaches you how to become patient, how to become calm. So everything happens for the reason. But this clarity comes only because when you become truly harmless, egoless, honest, and truthful. And that happens only when you become ahimsa or vegan. That becomes easy. Thank you.